next talk is on global perspective of plant factory for sustainable modern agriculture by our keynote speaker, Professor Toyoki Kosai. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Sanvon and Dr. Titafel and Dr. Kadmani for their organizing such a nice uh, symposium and for inviting me to give a chance to talk about the global perspective of plant factory with artificial right, PFAA or PFAR for sustainable modern agriculture. Now, fortunately, I have a chance to visit a new plant factory at Biotech, which was very nice, uh, very advanced, and I believe uh, this new plant factory at Biotech will advance PFAR technology significantly and will be a leading research institute uh, in the world. So I am very fortunate uh, to give a talk at this occasion. Today, uh, some part of my talk uh, is overlapped with that of Professor Takagaki, so this part would be skipped. And first, after introduction, I'll talk about characteristics of PFR, PFAL, a plant factory with artificial lighting, which are different from greenhouse cultivation or oven field cultivation. And then I'll talk about indices of improving the productivity of PFAR, how to improve productivity of PFAR step by step, and how and talk about methodology, how to improve the productivity. So methodology is very important to improve the productivity because we have little experience of PFAR. Then finally, I'll talk about what would be the future plant factory, the next generation plant factory, with uh, emphasis on the smart LED lighting and phenotyping and other units. So th this uh, part will be already talked by Professor Takangaki, but uh, one pointed, agriculture population has been decreasing very rapidly in many countries. And most farmers are aging, very old person. So we have to uh, find some way how to improve the productivity. And also, we have a sh problem of a shortage of water for irrigation. So we need to develop a plant production using small amount of water. So there are many plant production systems which can be classified into open field, the major part, and greenhouse, and PFAR. PFAR will uh, account for a very small part of agriculture, very small. Uh, but its technology is very high, and technology developed by PFAR will be applied in greenhouse cultivation and open field cultivation. And closeness in PFAR is very high. PFAR is very airtight. Open field, of course, open. And the controllability of environment is very high in PFAR and relatively low 
in the open field. So in the pea farm, we cultivate mainly high value crops, such as vegetables. So sustainable pea farm need to be designed and managed to achieve the maximum yield with the highest quality, with the use of minimum amount of resource and the minimum emission of waste or environmental pollutants, for conservation of the natural environment and the resources, and bringing about a higher quality of nature and higher quality of human life. And I believe PFAR is suited to achieve this, these goals. We can do this using a PFAR. I'll show you how. Because our mission of PFAR is contribute to solving conflicting, conflicting issues on food, environment, resource, the quality of life concurrently, but at the same time, we have to solve these four issues at the same time using a PFAR. And I'll show you how to achieve this goal. Principle of PFAR is very simple. We just supply resource to the PFAR and we get to produce as a plant from PFAR, and, but we still get some waste from PFAR. So our mission is to get maximum amount of produce with the highest quality using minimum resource and with the minimum amount of waste. So if all resource is converted to produce no waste, this is our goal. We have to find the method how to achieve this goal. And to what degree we can achieve these four goals, we can measure, and estimate, and evaluate using these indices. One is the resource use efficiency, shortened by RUE, resource use efficiency, and major ecological cost and economical cost of people and annual yield relative to the open field or relative to the greenhouse. And resource productivity and monetary productivity and overall monetary productivity. In PFAR, we can measure or estimate all these indices automatically online and we can find how to improve these indices step by step. I'll show you how to achieve this goal. First, I'll show the definition of resource use efficiency. We supply resource such as electricity, light energy, water, CO2, fertilizer, seeds, labor, etc. And we get produce. So, in case of for example, electricity, energy is converted to chemical energy in the produce. So, ratio of produce divided by this in terms of, of, of energy it is called electric energy use efficiency. Of course, we can measure electricity consumption 
on time that we can measure fresh weight and dry matter percent of produce, then we can calculate dry mass and we can calculate chemical energy contained in plant. We can estimate resource electric, electric energy use efficiency. In the same way, we can calculate light energy use efficiency, the water use efficiency, CO2 use efficiency, fertilizer efficiency, etc. Okay. If we get this value of resource use efficiency for each resource element, we can analyze how to improve this uh, efficiency. This can be done because PFAR is airtight and the summary well insulated. PFAR consists of six major components. One is summary well insulated and almost closed structure covered with opaque material like a warehouse. And Inside, we have a multi-tier hydroponic system with uh, lighting devices, mostly LED lighting devices, and uh, light source generate heat energy. So we have to remove heat generated by the light source, by air conditioner. And we have to saturate air to get a uniform distribution of air temperature and humidity. And we need to supply CO2 to enhance photosynthesis and growth of plant and nutrient solution, water and nutrient, and environment controlling to control all environment. So this is the six major component of cultivation room in the PFAR. Very simple. Because this is airtight and thermally insulated, we can measure all resource inputs, how much resource are consumed. To in summary, it's airtight, nobody insulated, and controlled environment, the hygienic, clean, and high plant density, and automated or robotized. These characteristics guarantee high productivity and high controllability of plant production. Because it's airtight and summer insulated, we can control environment as desired, as we want, regardless of weather outside. More remarkably, we can measure all rate variables, such as uh, electricity consumption, water consumption, and also we can measure translation rate, photosynthesis rate, and fresh weight increase rate. And of course we can also measure waste production rate accurately. So if we can measure these rate, rate variables, we can calculate resource use efficiency for each resource element and overall resource use efficiency. Because, well, suppose this is totally airtight, and there are many plants, and if we keep CO2 concentration at, for example, 1,000 ppm, plants absorb 
CO2 continuously. Then this CO2 absorption rate for the synthetic is equal to the CO2 supply rate. If CO2 concentration remains the same. So if you can me measure net photosynthetic rate, we can estimate pressure weight increase rate. And of course, because it's hydroponic, we supply Newton solution and get uh, 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 not the saturation rate of neutral solution by measuring the difference from water supply rate and water uh, output rate, we can estimate water uptake rate of plant by, by plants. In the same way, if we measure ion concentration, at the inlet and outlet, we can estimate ion uptake rate for nitrogen, phosphate, etc. Then we can estimate water use efficiency or fertilizer use efficiency. Also, in the P farm. Water vapor transpired from leaves are condensed at cooling panel of air conditioner and collected and returned to the water uh, uh, nutrient solution tank. We, then we can measure condensation rate of water vapor, which is equal to transpiration rate. Then we can estimate transpiration rate continuously. Okay. Then if we, you can measure water uptake rate by plant and transpiration rate from plant, we can estimate fresh weight increase rate by calculating the difference between, between water uptake rate and transpiration rate. This can be done very easily and accurately because it's airtight. It's closed the system. Uh, this is the essential characteristic of PFAR for improving the productivity continuously, and this is also very educational. It's very educational for students or for children. At the Chiba University, there are some these screens at the dashboard, and we can see net photosynthetic rate, transmission rate, and electric consumption rate as time costing. Then we, need, we can calculate how much electricity is necessary to get this transmission rate and this net photosynthetic rate. This is on the part of resource input and uh, plant response. This is the most important characteristics of PFAR. This, then we can improve the productivity based on evidence, based on measured data. And we can improve the productivity as science. In the former, in open agriculture, in greenhouse, we need some expertise, not a very good feeling, very sensitive, sensitive to the relationship. 
but we can do this by computer. For example, suppose if we want to know the effect of CO2 concentration on the plant growth or plant net photosynthesis rate, then we just change the set point, for example, from 900 p 10,000 ppm. Then immediately net photosynthesis rate changes. Then we can say CO2 increase from 900 to 1,000 is, uh, is a good way to produce productivity or not. Same for temperature, uh, nutrient solution, composition, etc. And we can get all kinds of data continuously every one minute, or every 10 minutes, or every daily. We can get a huge amount of data, big data. Then we can use this kind of big data or analysis by using simulation models or statistics. So, number four, PFAR can be built on non-fertile rubbish uh, or contaminated soil in, in a shaded area. Because of this characteristic, we can build PFAR anywhere in urban areas using small land area. So th this is suitable for local production or local consumption in urban area. Uh, we can, of course, use an empty room in a large building. However, many people complain. But initial investment cost too high. And we, you need high skill to manage the people. Uh, we do not have any good soft hardware to manage people. This is a problem, but this is a big opportunity, business opportunity and the research opportunity, because we know we can solve this problem. In 1990s, we started a project on plant factory at Chiba University. This was built in, in 1999, seven tiers, all automatic transporting, irrigation, all automatic. We, at that time, we used fluorescent, fluorescent tubes, not LEDs. And using this system, we measure resource use efficiency in the PFAR and compare with those in the greenhouse in terms of water, CO2, fertilizer, seed, light energy, and electric energy. If all the water supply is converted to the plant, in water in the plant, efficiency is 1.0. In PFAR, it is 0 0.96. In greenhouse, water use SMT is 0.02 to 0.03 because all transpired water paper disappear somewhere. We cannot put 
wat dat beter. En het CO2, de ondabel, de vrijtreizer, 0.80 tot 0.90, en C, 0.95, 0.90. Compared to 0.8 to 0.9, but this seed use efficiency is much improved now. However, the problem is light energy use efficiency is still very low, only 0.027. It's higher than the greenhouse, but it's much lower. Than the theoretical maximum value, we are wasting light energy because we still cannot optimize the environment. We cannot find best cultivar, but we can because we know why. Also, energy use efficiency is still very low. Compared to maximum value, this was improved by use of LEDs instead of fluorescent fuel, but still the very low. Maximum 0.06 theoretical value, but current values on FIFA 0.007. So 93% of electric energy was useless. But there are many good engineers, qualified engineers here, so we can improve this energy efficiency. Then we can improve the productivity. In summary, so use efficiencies of water, CO2, and fertilizer in the FIFA are very high already. But use efficiencies of electric and light energy are still very low, 0.03, 0.022. Unfortunately for businessmen, cost of water, CO2, and water is very low. And cost of electricity Well, right energy, very high. So we have to improve the use of the efficiency of electric energy and right energy. But this can be done if you are a horticulturist, a plant physiologist, or a plant scientist. Because we know the relationship between plant growth and environmental factors. Or The influence of cultivars, or how cultivation method. Oh, and this is just one example. Uh, in the P our P farm, we supply 2,100 kilogram of water for irrigation. Then, 2,058 kilogram of water was transpired. And 2,000 kilogram of water was condensed and returned to the Newton solution tank. So water use efficiency is in this case 0.97. So, but unfortunately, cost of water is very low in Japan, maybe in Thailand. But this is very important in arid region. So, In the Middle East, where price of water is much higher than the price of gasoline. Now I'll talk about productivity. How productivity is defined? How productivity is calculated? The two types of productivity. One is resource productivity which is an index of ecological and environmental sustainability. And the monetary productivity is the index of economical sustainability. These productivity 
can be calculated for each resource element. If we can calculate the productivity for each resource element, we can calculate overall monetary productivity online. Resource use efficiency, uh, no, no, I mean, resource productivity is simply defined as the ratio of a produce wholesale, marketable produce, divided by resource supply. Very simple. We can measure marketable produce and the resource supply. You know, we can consider saleable portion ratio. What percentage of plants are saleable, marketable? And is amount of produce harvested divided by minimum amount of resource required to produce is will become maximum when resource use efficiency is one, which means all resource is fixed in the plant, then we can get the maximum or highest value of productivity for this resource element. If you are a business person, business person and interested in monetary productivity, we can simply multiply unit sales price and the unit cost. Then we can calculate monetary productivity. UP and the UC are already known when we supply. So we can calculate monetary productivity online. And we can change supply rate and we can estimate the influence of resource supply or resource unit price on productivity. Of course, we can consider the cost for waste treatment, waste processing, or cost for unused resource. In the same way, overall monetary productivity for all resources supplied can be simply defined as the unit price times uh, ratio of sale portion times amount of produce, divided by total cost of resources and waste processing. This can be also calculated online, and you can show on the screen. All PFAR manager must watch this value every day, and how to improve this productivity. However, only several commercial PFARs are using this function. Most PFARs, even in Japan, they do not have this software. But it's very easy to measure and visualize this productivity. In the future, all PFAS will have this software. Otherwise, you will lose money and you have to close your PFAS. The overall monetary productivity can be improved by increasing resource use efficiency, unit sales price of produce, and sale portion ratio, 
and by decreasing unit cost of resource, uh, unit processing cost for unsaleable produce, and unit processing cost for unused software uh, resource. Then we can conduct sensitivity analysis or interaction analysis. How each factor value uh, influence the overall monetary productivity. The most important role of PFAP manager is to analyze this equation and make a decision what we should do. This is a very simple example. Everybody can do very easily. When we grow data, hydroponics, only aerial part, leaf part, can be sold. Edible part. And, but we still get some damaged leaves or leaves with the tip one physical disorder and the roots. This, so our role is to minimize this, but to maximize upper part using minimum amount of resource or minimum amount of cost. We can measure this very easily using electronic balance online, automatically. In Japan, more and more people are doing this. They are measuring this automatically. But in this case, market portion is 87% of whole plant. And root part, 7.8%. Damage relief, 4.6%. But in other people losing money, root part is over 20%. They are growing roots instead of leaf, consuming higher resource amount. So if we want to make a profit, you have to measure how much root is produced. But if root is too small, it restricts restrict the growth of air part. For example, in this case, the upper photograph is, is letters grown with supplemental upward writing. And this is downward writing, normal writing only. By only downward writing, lower leaves become yellow. And this cannot be solved. then productivity is decreased. But if you put some small LEDs for supplemental writing, for upward writing, this can be sold. It's only 5% increase. But still it's effective to improve the productivity. This is just one of them. There are many other ways how to improve the productivity. Now, in this case, market fresh relief increased from 134 to 158, 80% increase of sale of portion. And net photosynthetic rate of lower level. The negative in the down right, down writing only, downward writing only. 
Now, this kind of trial and analysis can be done automatically in the P4. Of course, there are many factors affecting the productivity. Right environmental factors, air environmental factors, and neutral solution factors, and biological factors. Most of these factors can be measured automatically using very inexpensive sensors. And we get these values every one minute or so. Maybe analysis can be done by artificial intelligence software later. So in case of this based on to increase the productivity or to improve the syrup portion ratio, we have to increase whole plant weight, fresh weight, and increase leafy part portion, or make root part portion edible, or suppress physiological disorder, or suppress physical damage. You can choose any uh, method. But we can improve these and this ratio by environment control, or selection of cultivar, or management, or, or cultivation system, or marketing. So many factors. So currently, most of people just make a decision by inspiration, no reason. No evidence, no data. But in the next PFR, we must measure, we must analyze. So now I'll show you some actual data on three major cost components and resource productivity and the production cost per kilogram and land area producti productivity of PFA relative to the open field. Uh, this is one example of percentages of cost components and the revenue of PFA producing leaf vegetables in Japan by Ijichi. Last year. So this is just an example. It varies. But in this case, depreciation cost for initial investment account for 26%. And the labor cost, personal cost, account for 21%. And electricity cost, 18%. These are three major cost components. Before 2015, when people were not using LED, this is the largest cost component, nearly 30%. So using LEDs decreased electricity cost significantly. Then more and more people started making a profit. In this case, only 11%. Revenue is only 11% of uh, total sales. But I know some other are making more profit more. Now, then they increase from area of PIFA, second PIFA, third PIFA. But if you don't use any software and uh, sensor to analyze the productivity, they are losing money. So
So again, three major cost components, depreciation cost, labor cost, and electricity cost. The, probably you understand, we can reduce these three costs significantly within a few years, or several years at least. We can reduce uh, uh, initial investment, we can reduce the labor cost by introducing automated machine or robot, or we can reduce electricity cost for selecting better LEDs or improving the lighting system. It's not so difficult. I can say it's easy. This is a typical current data, current data. In this case, resource productivity. As for cultivation area, using one, cultiva one square meter of cultivation area, they can produce 0 0.25, 0 0.33 kilogram of marketable produce every day. And they can get 7.7 .7 to 10 kilogram of produce by one hour of labor. And electricity, they need 0 0.11, uh, no, no, to produce uh, by using one kilowatt hour of electricity, they produce 0 0.11 to 0 0.14 kilogram of market produce. If your PFAR cannot be, cannot achieve this value, you must close the PFAR. But this is only for the case in Japan. Well, as Professor Takagi told, uh, electricity cost, labor cost, depend, uh, vary in country by country. So you have to analyze uh, the case in your country. But anyway, it's important to measure these productivity online automatically. And if you can estimate resource productivity, we can easily estimate production cost for monetary productivity, just buying the unit cost. Another characteristic of PFAR is high land area productivity. Land area productivity is defined as the cultivation area productivity times cultivation area land area. Uh, this is ratio of cultivation area to the flow area. So if you have many tiers, many layers, you have a high cultivation area divided by land area. When I investigated this several years ago, probably um, 2000, in the year of 2000, land area productivity is over 100 times greater in the PFAR than in the open field. This value would pr is probably higher now. Mm. And some American company claim that land area productivity is 390 higher. I don't believe it's true because it's just in advertisement. But we can improve land area productivity. 
year by year. And that's why many PFARs are being built in New York, where land price is very high. Still, some PFARs are making profit. And this is just one example of land area productivity of PFAR relative to the open field. If you use 15 tiers, the land area productivity is 15 fold by use of 15 tiers. And we can shorten the cultivation period by environment control by half, then you can double the productivity. And also, in the pea farm, we harvest plant, and on the same day, they transplant, new seed transplant. Then cultivation days per year can be also doubled. So in this case, you can get over 100 productivity relative to the open field. So it depends on the number of layers and other environment control, etc. But this is important. And this productivity can be calculated online every day. Don't you need a break one? It's okay. <laughs> Can I continue? Well, please raise your hand if you want to have a break. Um, uh, what, what? Okay, so a quick break for five minutes.